and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. Darren, this has been one of the coldest springs on record. Heck, even today, I'm wearing three layers yet. What's going on? Well, that's not bad, Brian. You know, for <laughs> spring, usually by the time it's 85 degrees, he's down to two layers. So three, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> well, I do like it warm. So last summer, at least from the warmth standpoint, was good. Not so good for raising crops. Well, every year it seems like there are weather challenges. And one of the things internally in plants that is changing all the time too is growth hormones. And there are actually ways to supplement these plant growth hormones. We're going to talk about that just a little bit today. Well, you talked about how cool this year had been, you know, up to this point at least. And when you think about it, when you have a cool spring and you get a little bit of moisture, chances are you're going to have more disease issues. We're going to talk about foliar fungicides in corn. As always, we have a Weed of the Week coming up later in the show. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about a really fun thing. It's bugs around the house. Well, you know, you look around <laughs> here, Brandon, there are a few little bugs in this wheat. And yeah. when you think about it, out in a field, well, it's easy to deal with. We'll just get the sprayer out and we'll wipe those bugs out. No problem at all. But around the house, you got kids running around, you got dogs, you got Brian laying around in the grass. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. I mean, so you got to be a little bit more careful around the house than you may have to out in the middle of a field. Well, maybe, but here's the whole thing. Compared to years ago, we have a lot safer insecticides today. So for example, the product that we use around our house is Tempo, and what that's made from, it's a pyrethroid chemistry, and the pyrethroids are originally from the poison found in the chrysanthemum flower. So in other words, it's like sprinkling flowers all around your house. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying go take a bath in it or anything like that, but the whole point is, it's a lot safer than the more dangerous alternatives we had years ago. You know, we're actually using that same active ingredient out in our fields too, Brian, so it's not like we're spraying something dangerous out in the field, we're using the same types of products. Now around the house, when we think about bugs, there's a few that really oh, wait, stand yeah, up. But wait a second, before you get it, I mean, let, before we go any further, I think we need to talk just a little more about that safety side of things because even with Temple, even though it is a pretty safe product, we still want you to look at the label, look at the MSDS sheet, make sure you're using personal protective equipment where necessary. But the big thing I always tell people is it's just like flowers. So for example, there's a person I know who is allergic to certain flowers. Okay, well, the same thing can happen with Temple. If you're allergic to certain flowers, you might be allergic to Temple. It's not going to kill you or anything, but you might break out in a rash and things like that. So we just want to be a little bit cautious. All right. Well, okay. <laughs> it's pretty safe on humans, but the big thing is it's pretty dangerous to bugs. And when you think about around Certain the house, bugs. Certain around bugs. the house, you're looking at spiders crawling around the house. You don't want to have them in the house. You've got crickets outside making all kinds of noise this time of year. You've got ants that are trying to get in. You've got all kinds of different insects. How about ticks and insects. mosquitoes? Well, you've got lots of them that are going to crawl in. You've also got some like mosquitoes that are going to fly around. And you can certainly wipe out bugs that are going to crawl through this temple. Now, bugs that are in the air and fly around, you're probably not going to do much good unless you directly spray it on them. So it's just important to understand what you're doing with this temple. You're setting up a barrier around the outside of your home. So for example, when I spray my lawn for weeds, I'll mix some temple right in with my lawn spray. So basically my whole lawn will be protected from insects that crawl. So when I've got bugs like gnats, like mosquitoes that land down in my grass, I've got a good chance I'm either going to kill or repel them. Either way, it doesn't matter to me. As long as I leave my family alone, I'm a happy guy. So what I'll do is just mix up a little bit in a squirt bottle with water, and then I'll spray around my house and actually in my house. With Tempo, for example, it is labeled to use in your home, in schools, in hospitals, around livestock. It is, again, pretty safe, but it does get a wide variety of insects. And like Darren said, yeah, it's not gonna kill the bugs out of the air just by random, but if those bugs will land on grass that you treated, or for that matter, even some people will mix this stuff right in the paint they put on their house. And then if the bugs land on the house and they do that continually and they start absorbing more of that, then the bugs can die from that. Well, 
as long as they're not biting me or bothering me, I'm happy. Now, we talked a lot about tempo. There are other insecticides you can use around your house. For example, in the lawn, you could use imidacloprid. And that's a good way if you put imidacloprid out, you can buy it in the granular form, spread it with your fertilizer spreader across your lawn, and then water it in. And once it gets down into that root system, it protects you against insects like grubs that are going to feed on your lawn and create big dead areas out in your grass. So by controlling those grubs, you also control everything that feeds on grubs. So if you've got little moles coming in or something else, you know, little rodents coming into your yard to try and feed on those grubs, well, if you kill the grubs off, their food source, then you're going to get rid of those rodents at the same time too. That imidacloprid, by the way, that would be a generic version of poncho, gaucho, cruiser, that same chemical family anyway. Same kind of stuff that a farmer would use right on his seed corn or soybean seed or wheat seed. Well, it's important if you're going to live in the country or if you're going to live in town. There are bugs all over the place. And if there are bugs that aren't bothering you, like a butterfly, for example, that's great. But if you've got bugs that are bothering you, like ants or spiders or mosquitoes, you can do a nice job controlling them by using some insecticides safely around your house. Well, unfortunately, that insecticide won't do anything for our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you what will coming up later in the show. What's next in weed control technology? Roundup Ready to extend soybeans, an advanced soybean product with tolerance to dicamba and glyphosate. Roundup ready to extend soybeans. Extend your control. There are more mouths to feed than ever before. What are farmers doing to meet the challenge? They're using agronomically designed equipment from Case IH. Our Quattrec technology, soil management, and planting systems are designed to foster a better growing environment that helps farmers maximize yield potential. And our deep understanding of agriculture is preparing them for the challenges ahead. Will you be ready? I'm ready. Go to caseih.com to learn more. What's new for 2013? Challenge 2050. Challenge 2050 is a two component system consisting of a nutrient and a biological additive. This groundbreaking fertilizer contains mycorrhizal fungi which provide an extended transport system that allows water and nutrients to be delivered directly into the root. Challenge 2050 can increase yield and efficiency of your standard fertilizer program. Challenge 2050 is the future of fertilizer. Call TJ Technologies or your fertilizer dealer and get Challenge 2050 today. Speed, strength, and efficiency make Capello corn heads a head above the rest. Built with polymer components that exceed industry standards, Capello corn heads continue to push the boundaries for maximizing grain retention while using less energy. Visit CapelloUSA.com and learn more about Capello's state-of-the-art chopping technology that cuts cleaner, allowing your horsepower to remain where it belongs, with your combine, so you can harvest faster in all weather conditions. Add to that an amazing folding feature and it's clear to see why Capello is a head above the rest. You expect a lot from this seed and as it grows through each stage of development, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers is there feeding your crop exactly what it needs when it needs it. So no matter how you fertilize, no matter when, Agro Liquid efficiently brings all the nutrients your crop needs for a great harvest. From one kernel in the ground to 600 on the ear, for better yields and better quality, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers. A proven herbicide for decades, dicamba can provide burned down residual control of tough and resistant weeds for up to 14 days. That's another reason why farmers will use dicamba for years to come. Brought to you by Roundup Ready Plus Weed Management Solutions. Over the last few years, fungicide use in corn has gone way up, except of course for last year and the drought year. But we wanted to talk today about the timings that you could potentially use fungicide in corn and if this is gonna pay. Well, certainly we had good luck last year putting it in the furrow, putting something like Headline right in the furrow with our starter fertilizer as we planted. That worked out great for us last year. We had a nice gain. But when we're talking about foliar fungicides, our results have been a little inconsistent. Now, years back, guys were focusing only on tasseling time. So right after tasseling, when we've got all the silks out there, I mean, the whole field is completely tasseled. That's when we were trying to do it. And to do that on our farm, we had to hire an airplane. So that adds expense. And then you think about, wow, what kind of yield gain is it gonna to take to get a good return on investment when I add that expense? And so we're looking for earlier timings in the year to see what we can influence for plant growth. So it makes sense to look in that V4 to V7 window 
as much of our yield is being determined already at that stage. So we'll see what kind of results we get from that. All right, so before we get into those two specific timings, let me just say this. If you're in an area of the country that has a lot of rain, it has a lot of disease history, and bad diseases, I mean things like gray leaf spot, your likelihood of having these fungicides pay is probably pretty high. In our situation, we don't get a lot of rainfall where we farm in South Dakota, and we don't have gray leaf spot here, at least yet. So because of that, all we're trying to control is some of these uh, let's call it easier diseases to stop. They're not terribly harmful. I mean, maybe we have eye spot, maybe have a little bit of northern leaf blight. I mean, it's nothing that gets way out of hand most years. So our odds are not nearly as good as your odds may be. So I just wanted to preface all this by saying that. All right, well, now that you've shot down all the disease worries on our farm, Brad, yeah, but how about I'll say this health? too. Okay, I'll, I'll hit that in <laughs> just a second. But let's, let's look at this. Let's just say that we've got uh, you know, not a whole lot of disease issues out there, but there are some. Yep. Then we look at some of the differences in the hybrids. Now, if you've got a flat out racehorse hybrid with virtually no disease protection bred into it, I think you've got a lot better likelihood of getting a gain there versus a very defensive hybrid that maybe, you know, when you look in the seed guide and you see, wow, this thing is very moderate to highly resistant on almost all the diseases in my area. So you probably get a little less likelihood there. So there are some differences hybrid to hybrid, and we certainly have to keep those in mind as well. Yeah, but the challenge here is every year we're planting new hybrids. On our farm, we're planting at least half new hybrids every single year. So it's really tough if we say, well, last year this worked on it. We're not even planting that. How about this new stuff? That's where you really have to be dependent on an agronomist, on the seed company you're working with to say, hey, this variety does great, but it's not nearly as tolerant to diseases. So what I'm trying to say is, have more conversations with your seed dealer than just saying, well, I just need, give me your top five yielders and give me the best price you can and shop it all around and everything else. You really have to go a little bit more in depth more than you used to because you're not going to have five years to try out some hybrid on your farm and figure it all out and everything else. That's just not the way this industry is going. They're coming with newer, better stuff all the time. You want that new stuff. It's just you've got to know what that new stuff will do and what it won't do. Okay, so when we're looking at, you know, just hybrids across the board and we're talking about timings of fungicide applications, most everyone in the industry will say, well, you really have to worry in that V4 to V7 time period for a number of reasons. One, this year. We're super cool. And so by the time we get to that stage, maybe our plant's already undergone quite a bit of stress. And so we're more susceptible to a disease getting into that plant than if we had a great growing season and everything was perfect all the way through. Also at V6, that growing point for the corn plant is now above ground. So that's another important thing to keep in mind. So this V4 to V7 timing, here are just a couple of our thoughts. First of all, if you go just a little later, let's say it's V6, V7, you've got a much bigger plant, you've got more leaves to cover, the odds are a lot higher that you're gonna get fungicide on leaf as opposed to fungicide on the soil. Fungicide on the soil isn't gonna do us a lot of good. The other thing is, fungicide is only gonna protect the leaves that are out. So the fungicide's not gonna be systemic, it's not gonna help you for later leaves, it's kind of nice to protect as many leaves as possible. That's a good thing. And at around this kind of timing that we're talking about that early stage, you've got a lot of things happening in the plant. Don't forget that plants, these corn plants, take up a lot of their nutrients early in the season. So it's a very important time. It's an important time to protect that plant. Also at that kind of stage, usually the conditions are a little wetter and a little bit cooler as opposed to when we get closer to tasseling, when sometimes, especially like last year, think of how hot and dry it is in the middle of the summer when your corn's tasseling. Early in the season, it's not. A lot of times we've got just conditions that are ripe for disease. So that's why a lot of people are looking at that timing. But you know what? At the end of the day, here's what we want you to do. We want you to try these things out a little bit on your farm because there's no guarantee that what works for us will work for you or what works for you will work for us. Try things out, experiment on different hybrids, talk to your seed company, Companies, but that early timing, a lot of people are going to that and seeing result. And the other thing we haven't talked about, Brian, now is back to plant health. And that may be the reason that we're seeing gains because frankly, on our farm, we've seen some gains using products like Headline where we really didn't feel like we had a whole lot of disease out there. We couldn't really explain it. Now, granted, you're not always going to see disease manifest itself uh, with a visual symptom. Uh, but, you know, on a year where we never saw stuff show up in fields that that we didn't use the treatment in, but we did have a few bushel gain where we did use it, eh, maybe there's something to it, who knows? Well, yeah, and whether you believe in the plant health thing or not, 
who cares? The point is, did you get yield gain or did you not? If you get yield gain, it's something you want to continue doing, especially when we have good crop prices and fungicide really isn't all that expensive. So if you're going to go out there with even the full rate of headline, you're only going to spend 12, 14 bucks an acre. So you got to have three bushels of corn back. Okay. If you get six bushels back, you doubled your return on investment. Now, a lot of guys are getting five, six bushels. Some people aren't. So again, just look at your situation, try some things out. Well, I guess the other thing too, when we're looking at that V4 to V7 time period, you can actually apply those yourselves with a ground rig, and that's gonna control your cost, so it's easier to get a good return. All right, so we talked about that early time frame, that late time frame. We just wanna make sure you don't do the late time frame too early. In other words, don't be out there right before tasseling or just as tasseling is occurring. What we've seen is it's possible to have some yield loss if you spray then. We want you to wait until you're almost at brown silk stage. Uh, I mean, we want to see all the tassels out. Once all the tassels are out, then go ahead and spray. And like I said earlier, if you've got gray leaf spot or something in your area, you're probably going to have a real good yield gain. Well, certainly one of the things we're going to be looking at on our farm again this year is using foliar fungicide in corn, both early in the season in that V4 to V7 time period, but also around tassel. Well, we talk about a lot of these things to improve crops. I wish one of these things we talk about, Darren, would stop our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? Today's Case IH equipment is packed with industry-leading technology, and Titan Machinery has the experts to make it perform to its maximum potential. We have a team of specialists and the entire Titan Machinery network to provide you with the expertise to keep up with today's advanced machines. Whether it be for your Case IH planters, sprayers, or precision farming equipment, our experts have the answers to get the most out of your equipment investment. Maximize your productivity with Titan Machinery. Better solutions. Looking to maximize yield? QuickRoots is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. QuickRoots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more. QuickRoots is applied to the seeds so the live microorganisms go right to work, enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients, including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your local dealer and get your quick roots today. For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, Save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit farmlogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. Your equipment's ready, the seed's in the barn. You have a strategy to overcome the challenges you'll face and your crop protection products are pretty well locked in. But maybe you still haven't finalized your fertilizer plans. If not, visit agroliquid.com today. With products formulated for superior nutrient uptake, unsurpassed application flexibility, and proven by years of extensive research, this may be the season to take your yields to the next level using agriculture liquid fertilizers. One of the most misunderstood things about plants is all the different plant growth hormones that are going on internally. And what scientists are now trying to do is actually spray products over the top of crops, putting more plant growth hormones out there and trying to get varied response. Well, it's interesting, Brandon. We've had a chance to travel all over the world looking at high tech production in high value crops. You know, things like flowers and vineyards and vegetable and fruit production. All these things are pretty interesting and the dollars per acre are just a little bit better than <laughs> corn and soybean beans and wheat that we've got on our farm. And so those guys having more gross income per acre at their disposal, they can invest in some of these new technologies and try them out a little sooner than a corn and soybean and wheat farmer. Well, can. yeah, let's put it another way. They just have more incentive to do things right. I mean, if they make one correct decision on their farm, they might have an extra thousand dollars an acre in income. I'm willing to experiment if I might gain an extra thousand bucks per acre. That sounds like fun. But you know what? 
I look at corn and soybeans now as they're almost specialty crops, Darren, because it's possible to generate $1,000 in gross revenue off an acre of corn or soybeans. And yeah, by making one little decision, it's not gonna improve your yield enough for $1,000 an acre, but you could sure improve it $20 or $50. Well, you definitely can. And I guess when you look at some of the other crops, they're using these different growth hormones to try to control how many flowers a plant will put on or when they'll put them on or what height that plant will grow to. They yep. can actually shut plants off so they stop growing so tall. I know that's a big concern in certain parts the country you know with corn and soybean production yeah so we're not going to get super in depth here or anything but we just wanted to tell you about a few of these plant growth hormones and then you can start reading up on them learning more about them because this is kind of a coming thing even in corn soybean and wheat production so some of the good growth hormones that we like to discuss are acetic acid, gibberellin, and cytokinin. The stress hormone, the one we want less of, would be abscisic acid. So how can we make those things change in the plant? What do we need to do? Well, when we're spraying different things out in the plant, like say Roundup or a herbicide, that plant has to work that through its system and kind of work it off. If you're talking about Roundup Ready corn or Roundup Ready soybeans, they don't actually metabolize that Roundup. They kind of compartmentalize it in their body. So they have to work it through their system, get it out of the way, and that causes them to use some of their resources or energy to do that. Well, that stresses the plant a little bit. Right. So in other words, what we're getting at here is simply that if you do everything you can to raise a great crop, that's awesome. And chances are you'll have more of the positive growth hormones and less of the negative. But every time you go spray a herbicide... Or you get some bad or, weather right, or it, you know any stress on the plant. Right. Any stress. Even though you say, well, Roundup and Roundup ready crops, that's not stressful. Well, there's a little bit of stress. Okay, so the point is, even though you can't see stuff all the time, you're changing what happens with the growth hormones internally. So that's why a lot of farmers are starting to experiment with products like Megagrow, for example, that's a combination of cytokinin and IBA, two different acids, two different plant growth hormones, and that does change some things in the plants. So there are a lot of these different plant growth hormones that research companies are experimenting with now in corn, soybeans, and wheat, but they've been using them for years in a lot of these other crops. So again, we just suggest you start reading up on this a little bit, and maybe you'll make some changes on your farm because of it. Well, like Brian said, we aren't going into super detail on a lot of these things because you know what? A lot of these products are brand new, and we're still doing research with different growth hormones on our farm, and, and we would expect that you're going to be doing some on your farm too over the coming years. The good thing about these is they can help plants grow. The bad thing is we haven't used them yet to kill weeds like our <laughs> Weed of the Week. We'll show you what will stop this weed coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. You work to protect your farm's legacy and to keep it going. Introducing the Enlist Weed Control System, an advanced herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate for exceptional control of tough weeds. The next chapter begins. Brian and I were kids, we had to hand pull a lot of weeds. And when they were big, tall weeds, it wasn't easy. When we saw some giant ragweed, which is our weed of the week today, that stuff could get 10 feet tall, even a little bigger. Yeah, it could, but you know what? I didn't mind pulling that as opposed to milkweed. Milkweed was a lot more difficult, so I don't know. I, I don't mind giant ragweed. I just don't like to have it in my fields anymore because it does take a lot of yield. Well, it certainly grows fast, shades out your crop, and pulls a lot of nutrients and water out of the ground, so giant ragweed is a bad problem. Plus, in many areas, it's becoming resistant to Roundup, which makes it even more of a challenge. Yeah, and that is a challenge, especially in broadleaf crops like soybeans, because we don't have a lot of good post-emerge options. The best post option in soybeans would be first rate. Flexstar is not too bad. Cobra has some activity. What we would encourage you to do pre-emerge is get out some Authority or Valor, also get some Metribuzin out there. I like using those products as opposed to putting my first rate in the soil because if I use first rate one time, I really don't want to use that same mode of action twice in the same season. Well, you're taking a risk of having some carryover issues there. Fortunately, it's a little easier when we talk about corn production. You know, you can use some pre's to kind of hold things back like a Sure Start or Triple Flex, for example, but then post-emerge, you've or got verdict. status. And status is awesome 
Pulse Emerge, yeah, you can control even, that giant ragweed that's, say, six inches tall or less. Yeah, but even Callisto, Loudus, Impact, they're all good, and even better if you throw a little atrazine with them. In wheat, I'd probably suggest putting Sharpen down, follow with Husky over the top, and you shouldn't have a lot of problem with giant ragweed. So just stay after this thing, both pre and post, and giant ragweed won't rob a lot of yield on your farm. That's all the time we have for this week's weed, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. What are farmers doing to feed the planet? They're using Quadtrek technology, soil management, and planting systems from Case IH to foster a better growing environment that maximizes yield potential. Visit CaseIH.com to be ready. When you're upgrading on equipment, some pieces of machinery make you money and are worth the investment. Other pieces of new equipment can save you significant time in the field or with repairs. We'll discuss something that could do both in today's Iron Talk. When it comes to a good mower conditioner, if you're cutting alfalfa hay or pasture grass or something else, this is a piece of machinery that is critically important in your operation. Almost anywhere I travel, I meet a farmer complaining about it raining only when he has hay lying on the ground. More commonly though, I see the problem of farmers not getting the hay cut timely. The difference in relative feed value for livestock and simply the quality of the hay all starts with getting it cut timely. If you're broken down, you just can't get the job done. With the new mower conditioners, many upgraded features focus on reducing downtime in the field. For example, look at the shock hub on Case IH's machine. It protects the cutter bar when you find an obstruction like a rock or an animal mound in the field. Rather than the gearbox getting obliterated, the shock hub takes the blow. It's a fairly easy 10 minute fix. You no longer need tools also to adjust the swath boards and the windrow shields. The cut quality and the crimping are better and more consistent than ever, and the flow of hay moving through the machine from the cut to the windrow is smoother and more even. Whether your machine is new or old, you still need to take the time to make some adjustments to the machine. So make sure your cutting tools are sharp for an even cut and less streaking. Set your angle and flotation right for good quality as well. And set the pressure and gap of conditioning rolls to make creases in the stems for drying, but not tearing the stems or tearing the leaves off. When properly maintained and operated, your mower conditioner can provide your operation a great return on your investment. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Today's number is three. You can see it everywhere, and it can stand for almost anything. But when it comes to protecting the nitrogen that feeds your crops, three is the special number that sets Nutrisphere N Nitrogen Fertilizer Manager apart because Nutrisphere N has proven to reduce all three forms of nitrogen loss, which adds up to keeping more nitrogen and yield where it belongs. So ask for Nutrisphere N, the stabilizer that fights nitrogen loss three ways. There are more mounds to feed than ever before. What are farmers doing to meet the challenge? They're using agronomically designed equipment from Case IH. Our Quattrack technology, soil management, and planting systems are designed to foster a better growing environment that helps farmers maximize yield potential. And our deep understanding of agriculture is preparing them for the challenges ahead. Will you be ready? I'm ready. Go to CaseIH.com to learn more. For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit FarmLogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. The all-new S-Cube Commercial Tender is the only tender on the market with poly tanks, giving you the capability to haul seed, fertilizer, water, or liquid fertilizer. Each cube can hold 300 units of seed, 2,000 gallons of liquid, or 300 cubic feet of fertilizer. Options include full-functioning wireless remote, stainless steel conveyors, and self-contained hydraulics. Get yours today at Norwood Sales. 
That's all the time we have for today's show, but be sure to join us again next time for another Weed of the Week, Iron Talk, Farm Basics, and a whole lot more. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. 75 to 95 percent of soil applied phosphorus may be tied up and made unavailable to plants. Farmers use organic proteins and other fertilizer innovations to ensure their crops are fed properly. For more information, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.